Hello, everyone. Happy Wednesday. hump day. Today is Wednesday, right? Yeah, it's Wednesday. I'm going to change my see a few of the folks who are actually on the webinar. Uh, feel free to say hi if you know me or even if you're new to me. Say hi in the comments. I am really, really excited about this. So many of my parts are like all over the place, a little uh, <laughs> hyper right now. Very, very excited about what we're doing today um, for the folks who are joining us live, Facebook or YouTube. Just know that my parts are kind of really excited to have you here in this virtual space with us today. So we're talking about a hard topic, but I believe hard topics don't have to be number one, boring, and they don't have to be um, emotionally tra traumatizing, right? I believe that we can have hard conversations with compassion and an open heart and just a lot, a lot of curiosity. So that's what we're gonna um, set the intention to do today is to have some very, uh, very necessary conversations uh, for a time such as this and to invite people who may have wanted to talk about these things to really chime in and be heard. And so I'm here with Dick Schwartz, uh, my, I can say my good friend now. I think I yeah, can. You can. Yeah. I'm glad to say that too. Yeah, he said to say that like two years ago, but my parts were like, <laughs> hell no. <laughs> but I think I'm getting there. Fantastic. <laughs> so shout out to IFS for helping me. Myself personally, I've evolved and grown so much since I met Dick the first time. Um, and even more so before that, when I was introduced to the model as a client. Um, so many of you know that I'm on social media, really spreading awareness of not just mental health, but wellness, emotional wellness, and how we can all just strive to be a little bit better in our lives to ourselves, right? Not for anybody else, but so that you can have more joy and more, and really thrive, right? And we know that right now, a lot of people are struggling, me included, I think all of us, I think it would be abnormal to, to not have any kind of challenge right now emotionally. Um, but again, I wanna check in with everyone who's watching. I am excited to have you connected here with us. And I want to ask just one question because I know that you may, some people may not be hearing this question right now. Hey, Tammy. Um, hi, Tammy. So Tammy is, a, she has an IFS podcast. Hey, girl. Hey. Uh, but I want to ask Tammy, you and everyone else, because a lot of us are healers or we're leaders. Uh, Dick, even, you know, we're, we're not often asked, how are you? Right. How are you? So check around with your part. See if there's any part that might be dominant that wants to be heard and, and you can check with your other parts and see if it would be okay to share that. Like I say, even if you're on Facebook or YouTube, a lot of us right now are just needing connection and we need somebody to say and care and want to know, like to really ask and care, how are you doing? And, and we all, some of us need a place to share that, right? So I think that this could be a place to share. So I was asking Dick before we jumped on, um, Dick, how are you? I'm sure not many people ask you about your parts. <laughs> Uh, well, I'm excited to be with you, and I, I'm glad you call me your friend, and I, I'm glad that I've earned that uh, designation. Um, and I'm excited about this topic, because I, I think it's an important one, particularly these days, because a lot of uh, parts and their burdens are coming up now. And uh, I'm good overall. Uh, sometimes I feel guilty saying that, but, you know, it's nice to have a break from the crazy travel schedule I had and uh, I'm actually getting to know my wife for the first time and, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <Thank> you. <laughs> yeah so that side of it's good and then of course I have parts that are worried about what's going to happen like we all have and and uh, feel the suffering of lots of other people so it's a combination I mean it's 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 nice to be able to accept all those parts and not feel guilty for the part that feels good and also not feel oppressed by the ones that are critical of me for feeling good and so on, so. Right, right. And so um, I was also explaining to Dick that a lot of my audience, um, you know, they hear me talking about parts, but they don't always understand, you know, I don't always explain what a part is. So from my perspective, a part is like, uh, something that developed from one of my experiences, typically in childhood, and it holds some some fear or beliefs about myself, others, or the world. Um, it usually has something to do with safety for me. And mm -hmm. so, you know, the more I spend time with my parts, listen to my parts, I think that's really the key in the beginning is just so much of us were taught to 
um, block out everything that we're hearing inside of ourselves and listen right. to the world, you know, listen to others. Other people are the authority for our lives. It's kind of the message I think that society gives us. And we're going to talk more about that through these legacy burdens. It tells you what to believe, what to think, mm -hmm. how to behave. You know, if you're a woman, you're supposed to behave this way. If you're a black person, you we automatically view you this way. Or, you know, if you're poor or just whatever, you know, experience you're finding yourselves in, oftentimes we're giving labels and we're told kind of the script for that part. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, IFS has really taught me to redefine my own roles for myself. And mm -hmm. to maybe not prioritize all of them, right? Like I was telling Dick, you know, with the quarantine and getting ready for today, it was really hard to be the stylist, the nail technician, the makeup artist, you know, the IT person. It's a lot. But mm -hmm. I'm also allowing myself to say whatever I'm doing is enough. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah. So, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. It's been really refreshing. I, I will also say that this experience has been kind of, mainly a high for me however there were some lows in the beginning um and i want to share these these parts of myself with others who might have been experiencing something similar if you come from like maybe a family with a lot of dysfunction or you come from poverty um you know and you've maybe you know your experience has changed but some of your parts are still stuck there and so that's been a lot of my life is you know i grew up in poverty um, I grew up with a mother who was addicted to drugs, a lot of untreated mental, Ill mental illness, a lot of racism in Texas. Um, and I'm no longer there, but some of my parts still are. Right? Right. So I had to really talk to them and listen to them. And when this epidemic for, or pandemic first happened, um, my parts were very panicked. And I had to really figure out, I mean, I was really hysteric at some points and I had to figure out like, okay, what is it that they're needing? You know, what is it that they're trying to tell me? Why is this activated? Um, and I noticed that a part of me felt trapped. Um, so being told you can't go, um, you know, the logical self, the highest self of me realized that, okay, this is actually kind of similar to our regular everyday schedule. For me, I work from home, everything's on the internet. So myself was saying, you know, there's not many things that have actually changed for you, but my parts were saying, we're being restricted. We're being told, you know, not to be, not to do, not to go. Um, and, it, and it felt very, I, almost like uh, claustrophobic. Mm -hmm. um, and some people say they feel that way on cruise ships. You know, it's just, it's important to, I think, to just notice experience emotionally when they feel similar to a previous experience. So that's, that's kind of what my part, my, interpretation of parts is an understanding of my own parts and just sharing you know an example of some parts that I've still struggle with and, and kind of work it working through um, but it's a beautiful journey once you once you're even open to listening to them I think that um, you just become very in tune with what's happening yeah Durant could you say more about when you finally did turn inside and listen to the part that felt trapped uh, right what did you do with it or where did it take you? Anything? You well, take? like I said, uh, for me, I had a very traumatizing um, childhood. And for those of you who are familiar with like the ACEs, Adverse Childhood Experiences scale, I'm a nine out of 10. So I have, you know, the whole gamut of child abuse and poverty and neglect. Um, and being told like you can't, you have no control. You, and I realized it was more so about powerlessness. That, that was the exile. We consider exile part that we push, push, push way down. And as a black woman, you know, I'm supposed to be strong. Mm -hmm. I'm not supposed to have a weakness. And, and I realized that was the legacy burden mm -hmm. that there's, you know, okay, this is a, a, a normal thing to be afraid about. Mm -hmm. And I, a friend said to me, it's okay to be scared. Mm -hmm. And that little partner heard that and thought, oh, well, I've <laughs> never heard that before. You know, like, no. no. And I said, if they're black and I said, have you ever heard another black person say it's okay to be scared? Because, mm -hmm. you know, many, many generations ago, being scared could get us killed. Absolutely. That's right. And that's a, that's a great example of what we call a legacy burden. So um, just to do a little teaching piece around burdens. So as Duran said, we have these parts and if you grew up in a perfectly harmonious family and a perfectly harmonious culture, 
they'd just be in their naturally valuable states and you wouldn't even notice them. They'd just be helping you in your life. But we all had traumas to some degree. Not, you know, I'm nowhere near a nine on that scale, but I have my, I have my traumas and those experiences sort of inject our system with these extreme beliefs and emotions that we come to call burdens. <clears throat> and those extreme beliefs, like the one you're talking about, which is you can never be vulnerable, you can never be scared, you have to be strong all the time, attach to certain of our parts and become almost like um, organizers of their experience, almost like, to use a, a word that's hot right now, it's almost like they are a virus that enter one of our parts and drives the way it operates therefore, thereafter and drives it to be extreme. And so we all have burdens that come from our direct experience like traumas and like the abuse you've alluded to and, and what's called attachment injuries. But we also carry burdens that didn't happen to us, that came into us through our lineage or through our ethnic group or or there are burdens that are just floating around in, in the American culture that also attach to our parts and, and drive them. We call those legacy burdens. And they're very powerful organizers of our experience. And part of why they're so powerful is because we often don't even notice them because we just think that's the way it should be. Like you were talking about with, I should always be strong. You know, that's until you're forced to notice it, you just think it's true. And it, it really organizes everything in your life. And so that's why these legacy burdens are really important to try and explore and ultimately to unburden, to what we call unload, uh, because once parts are released from them, it's almost like a curse has been lifted and they can transform into who they really are. So if you don't mind saying some more about it, so you found the part that yeah. carries this burden of you have to be strong. And then what happened? And I want to go back to what you said about like, it feels true. Because especially right now, there are a lot of people who, you know, don't have the privilege that I have. And I, I, you know, I always want to honor that. I always want to acknowledge the parts of our country that that is their reality, that they have to be strong and go to work. They have to be strong and keep the roof over the, you know, for their kids' head, for their kids. They have to, you know, maybe they're single mothers or they're, you know, they just lost their job and they can't, they can't afford to fall apart at this very moment. I can relate to that. You know, I did 18 years in the military mm -hmm. and throughout those years it did not feel like you know any of the at, at any point it was a great time to be vulnerable or mm -hmm. you know um, really acknowledge any of my parts that were afraid yeah. and so I, I want to say that that is real um you know systemically for some people in their lives and and right um we don't want to be stuck there you know if, yeah. if when there comes a time if there ever comes a time where that is no longer true for you and yeah. that 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 thought or that you know just that urge or that pattern is no longer serving your life. That was kind of the experience for me. You know, when I left the military, I realized that I had adapted to that, and I had adapted to my whole life in ways that weren't going to take me where I wanted to go after. Mm -hmm. And so I'm constantly, you know, I do like periodic throughout my day that a, not, a large part of my day is spent just listening to my parts. As I said, listening to the the inner dialogue that's happening inside of me so when i found this powerlessness part i'd actually been projecting it onto my partner um mm -hmm. and i had been saying you know why do men have such a hard time being vulnerable and why isn't it more easy for you to just admit that you have no control over the situation that you're scared mm -hmm. and i couldn't even do that myself mm -hmm. so another really useful tool for me in ifs is the u-turn you know being able to say whatever i'm saying to someone else what would it be like if I was saying that to myself mm -hmm. or to my parts or to me, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have to be careful with the word self now because I realize for, for me, I believe self is encompassing of, you know, all love and, and um, greatness. Mm -hmm. So I, I do believe that, you know, there are, everyone has it. Everyone has a self. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and if I am saying this person is, you know, this or that, maybe I'm seeing a reflection of myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so um, I started to sit with that part. And it, of course, it took me back to the four-year-old little girl. I have a lot of parts around four years old. Mm -hmm. um, I think that was a time when I really took responsibility for my sisters and my mother. And, you know, like my mother just would stop waking up to feed us. And so I had to kind of really figure out, okay, you know, of course, as a four-year-old, you, you have so many questions. Mm -hmm. Why is this happening? You know, why, why do I have to do this? How do I do this? Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of sense of powerlessness. And, and at that time, I actually did have very little power over the situation. Absolutely. And so I, I was able to go back and be with that little girl and just acknowledge like how much she did. That was a big thing that she did. That's amazing. Yeah. And just acknowledging that she was like, oh, someone sees me and, and they're normalizing how I feel. Mm -hmm. All these years, she's felt powerless because she was, had this huge challenge ahead of her. Had no idea, you know, every day it was like, are we going to die? That's right. Because I'm not prepared for this job. So, you know, and it's my job to keep us alive. That's right. And she certainly couldn't afford to be vulnerable. You know, she had right. to be strong all the time. Exactly. So, so you were able to acknowledge all that. And, uh, and then what happened? What, how did you help her? Well, I, I haven't quite, this is the thing about, you know, self-therapy. <laughs> <laughs> I think you can only take yourself so far and I applied my part they do really good work <laughs> mm -hmm. but, <laughs> but you kind of need someone else to say okay you know like you know kind of nudge you along sometimes because the parts are still scared yeah and they're unsure and they're like can we really trust this you know so for me because my parts I have so many parts that didn't know self at all mm -hmm. it's, it's like starting a whole new parenting relationship that's right you know and the baby has to really get used to this other person and to to know that they're going to take care of them that that's they're right. not going to forget about them they're not going to get too busy you know like all the other things that they've experienced from their actual physical parent you know so mm -hmm. she still has some of those parts and so i usually just take my time with them this one is about like a month old about the time of the pandemic um, and so I just been sitting with her. We went to the beach. We've done a, a lot of things that Facebook has seen. <laughs> a couple people on Facebook, if you follow me, you've seen me take her to the beach. And she wanted to go for a road trip with me and just spend some time. And I, I treat them, I try to treat them as good as I would my own child because I love him, you know, very deeply. Um, and I think that that has helped, like being a parent and knowing what kind of parenting experience my son is enjoying. Yeah. And kind of how I can recreate that for myself. I agree. It really takes that kind of uh, taking them that literally and that seriously as if they were your own children. Right. You know, they don't need the same level of maintenance as your children. <laughs> <Thank children. goodness. laughs> but <laughs> but they, they need you to remember them and to, to go back to them. And so what I'm hearing you say is the action of doing the U-turn, you know, turning back what is this about? Why am I feeling so scared? Following the fear instead of trying to push it away or, you know, uh, or, or, or blend with it, you know, have it dominate. You separate from it, you listen to it, it shows you where it, where it stuck, which is when you were four and you had to take care of your family. And, and this is why it feels so trapped now because, you know, that is so similar in some ways. And just that awareness, it sounds like, just knowing where this is coming from, you were able to separate and not stay in that fear. Uh, and you still have yet to actually heal and unburden that little girl. Does that sound right? Right. You want to finish up with her? <laughs> She's really scared because she feels like um, if you give up your strength, you know, that's the only power you've ever known. Right. Yeah. Do you want to do a piece of work? Yep. <laughs> okay. Yep. You ready? Of course, parts are saying, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want you to feel pressured. There's no pressure at all. I just want to offer. No. 
it's for me, you know, it's That's whatever right. it is that I'm going to achieve. It's for me. That's right. So. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Thank you guys. All the people in the webinar. Yeah. <laughs> Very encouraging. <laughs> <laughs> That's sweet. All right. So focus on her and find her in your body or around your body. She's in my heart. How do you feel toward her as you notice her there? Yep. How do you feel toward her? Just have a lot of uh, care and admiration and love. So let her know all that, see how she reacts. She's enjoying that. <laughs> good, good, good. So she trusts that you care about her right now? Okay. She knows I like her. <laughs> good, that's really important. So ask her if she does feel like you understand what happened to her back there, or if there's more she wants you to do, wants you to know about it. She was just kind of telling me like um, she wasn't allowed to say how hard it was because she knew it was hard for my mom too. Yeah. Okay. And she wanted, like I asked her, do you want me to say that out loud? Is that important? She said, yeah. Yeah. Like, it needs to be spoken, it needs to have words, just, you know, That's the right. limit there. Yeah. So let her know. With... Mom so much. Yeah. Of course she Let her know we're all getting that. That she didn't wasn't able to speak this and how hard that was for her. And just see if there's anything more she wants you to know about it. It's funny, I would have never asked her that. Like I would have never even think about how important that was. Yeah. It's really important. It's good. I'm glad she was able to tell you. Anything else she wants you to get right now? No, she's like, that was the main thing is that she wanted to, you know, that was the hardest part is feeling like if you say this, then, you know, you don't love your mom or. You know. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Duran, so I'm going to invite you now, if you're ready, mm -hmm. to go to her in that time and be with that four-year-old in the way she needed somebody. Just tell me when you're in there with her. Yeah. How are you being with her? I just looked at her and I told her, you can tell me anything. Great. That's great. Video, you can tell me. Yeah. Whatever you want. How's she reacting? She's kind of like, huh? <laughs> like, yeah. Anything? Are you sure? Like, got some pretty crazy wild stuff I can come up with. <laughs> so, like, yeah, I remember when my son was four, you know. Mm -hmm. It's fine. It's all fine. <laughs> yeah. Can she believe you? Yeah. When I told her, I had to remind her, like, I have a kid who's eight, almost eight. I know what he was four at one point, you know, not too long ago. He was four. <laughs> so uh -huh. I kind of know how. Okay. <laughs> so she things. believes now. Yeah. That's what Thank I have you. to have like real conversations with my. With her. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and Durant, ask her if there's anything else she needs you to do with her or for her back there before we take her to a good place. It doesn't feel like it. It feel like it was just really important for her to tell me what her dilemma was, like what that okay. struggle was. All right. So she doesn't need you to do anything with the mother or the siblings or? No. Okay. All right. 
So see if now she's ready to leave that time and place with you and come to a safe, comfortable place. She was like, yeah, I want to see this kid you got. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good, good, good. <laughs> She'll have a playmate. <laughs> so she wants to come to your house, she wants to come to yeah. where you are now? Yeah. So let's let's bring her there, bring her right to you and tell me when she's there with you. She's here. Mm. That's great. How does she like being there with you? It doesn't look the way she expected it to look, so she's kind of... <laughs> Better or worse? <laughs> she's taking it in. I think it's going to take her a while. <laughs> Okay, if she can check it out. <laughs> yeah. And tell her she never has to go back there and you're going to be taking care of her now. And given that, see if she's ready to unload these burdens, these feelings and beliefs she got from that time. She said there's like this this thing around like poverty and racism that she isn't quite ready to let go of because you know she's she's a little worried about like the other people that that still experience and okay things yeah she doesn't have to let go of anything but how about the fear and the sense of being trapped yeah she's up for letting go of that oh yeah. And ask her where she carries that in her body or on her body. Actually in her neck, in her shoulders and the neck area. Yeah. And ask what she'd like to give it all up to. Light, water, fire, wind, earth, or anything else? She likes fire. <laughs> so when she said fire, she was like, yeah, fire. <laughs> Great. So tell her, go ahead and set up a fire for her and tell her to take that out of her neck and her shoulders and put it in the fire, let the fire take care of it. Is that all done? <laughs> good. How does she feel without it? She feels good. She's like warming her hands with the fire. <laughs> yeah. That's great. So tell her now if she wants to, she can invite qualities into her that she'd like to have and just see what comes in. Now she's really glad that she chose fire. She's like, we can just take like the fire, the element of fire. Great. And keep that. So how's she seem now? She's happy. Good, that's great. And then Duran, let's invite in all the parts that have been protecting her so they can see that they don't need to do that now. And maybe particularly that part that believed you had to be strong all the time. And just see how they react. They're happy to know that she's going to be okay. That's great. Yeah. And maybe check with that part that, that tries to keep you strong all the time and just see how it's doing in particular. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was the one that was kind of like, okay, as long as she's going to be okay. Okay, good. And see if it's interested in unloading that legacy burden, uh, that belief that you have to be strong. 
It doesn't have to, but just check and see if it's up for that. Not quite yet. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, she's willing to like pass it back to my mom. Yeah. But there's so much, you know, like other pain beyond that. But she's like, I think they needed to be strong. You know, maybe parts of them needed to be strong. I don't know. It's hard to imagine. Parts of your parents or? My, part like my grandmother, you know, mm -hmm. like having to go out and pick cotton. Yeah. No, they did. They couldn't, like you said, it's a luxury to be able to do this. They couldn't, they couldn't afford that luxury. But does she want to give it back to them and, or does she want to send it out or does she want to keep it? She wants it? to show them like what their sacrifice enabled for uh -huh. me. Fantastic. Like to, to like the, the legacy gift that's been passed down. Because Let's look that they had like you know I could be here to do this that's perfect so let's do that so uh invite them their spirits to come and tell me if they show up yeah it's like the whole room <laughs> okay good and I want you to go ahead and tell them about what their sacrifices allowed for you and see how they react they're proud that's great yeah, let them know how grateful you are. And Duran, you can see if there's anything they want you to know right now. They're like, they're rooting for me. Yeah, that's great. Like they all have their hand on my shoulder and they're just telling me like, But they're proud of me and they're here for me. That's right. Yeah. And and let all your parts take that in. It really helps to know you're not alone in this world. Because they're right there with you. You know, some of the older ones are like, dry your ass, girl. <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. Well, before we stop, let's go back one more time to that protector with the legacy burden of strength and see how it's doing now. Everybody's feeling so proud. Like, great. Proud of the ancestry, proud of the heritage, proud mm -hmm. of like all the, the resilience and the, mm -hmm. all the parts, like just yeah, like grateful for everything. Yeah, we'll just let them know that we see them and we see what it took to get where you are, not only for your ancestors, but also for you. And we honor your protectors. How does it feel now? Feeling oh, really good. Good. Yeah. I want to thank you for that. It was beautiful and uh Oh hi Chicha. <laughs> oh 
All my friends are here. I'm so <laughs> I've just been watching the chats come up and everybody's loving it. They, they, they just are so grateful to you for going there and being so vulnerable. So I am too. Me too. Shout out to my parts. Uh -huh. <laughs> so this is, you know, it's a really great example of how we can use this time because a time like this is triggering all kinds of parts in everybody. Yeah. And they can be what we call trailheads, which are, you know, this, the beginning of a trail that if you follow like you did, you find these key parts that need so desperately to be healed that actually will make a big difference in the rest of your life if you do it. So that's, you know, that's a great message to everybody about how to use this, what we call tormenting experience. You know, it's a tormentor in the sense that by tormenting you, it mentors you about what you've got to heal. Well, before we stop, Duran, first, I, I want to thank you again for being so vulnerable in front of all these people. And, uh, and I'm so glad we could help that little girl. And yeah. well, given what you said about your ACEs score, you, you're, you have amazing trust in yourself. And yourself has amazing respect from your parts. And uh, so it's just an honor to have you in the community. Yeah, I'm, I'm always thrilled to, to contribute and be here. Right. So, all right, you guys, thank you for being here with us and joining in and contributing to this conversation. Keep it going. Share this to your page if you're on Facebook or YouTube. Share this. I think this is an important conversation that we all need to be having right now. I do too. And if there is a way to save the uh, chat thing, uh, I'd love to read some of these. So I hope yeah. maybe, Sarah, you can do that. I think she's on it. I trust her. <laughs> All right, everyone. Take care. Bye. -bye. Bye.